It's Thursday, March 27th, 2025, and we've got a lot to talk about today, including a heavy rainfall threat across South Texas that we've got to watch very closely. Plus, we've got multiple rounds of severe weather on the way starting today, and then especially as we go into the weekend. You guys know we've been watching this big system coming. We're going to be talking a lot about that today, and we've got a little bit of winter weather to cover as well. All right, here's that moderate risk of excessive rainfall. The most immediate and significant concern today is going to be our heavy rainfall event down here in South Texas. This looks like it's going to be a potentially historic rainfall event with some areas getting up to 15 inches of rain. We've got that moderate risk of excessive rainfall down here around Corpus Christi up towards uh, Victoria. Some places will be experiencing rainfall rates around two to three inches per hour and the Weather Prediction Center has even discussed maybe upgrading this to a high risk which is the rarest rainfall risk that we can get. So definitely a uh, potentially life-threatening situation going on down here in Texas. Just look at this low-level jet cranking up out of the southeast. It's pumping moisture uh, with precipitable water values exceeding 1.5 to 2 inches, which is actually very high for this time of year. So here in the blue, that's where we could see rainfall rates exceed what we would normally expect out of a thunderstorm. And as you can see, we've got elevated values across much of the country, but where we've got the highest concentration of thunderstorms down here, that's where it matters most. And uh, yeah, we've got crazy rainfall rates happening along the coast of Texas. The environment down here supports organized convection, potentially training over the same areas for extended periods of time. So you can see those storms popping up. Some of those are going to be severe in nature, and they're going to be going over the same places over and over again, dropping copious amounts of rainfall. And once again, we're talking about some places getting over 8 to 10 inches of rain. Some places will get close to 15 inches, and the threat will extend into tomorrow, where we've got a slight risk of excessive rainfall from Houston all the way over to Lafayette. And then guess what? We're going to continue to have heavy rain on the day three outlook all the way over into the Florida Peninsula. So if you live in a flood prone area, be weather aware. Now looking a little bit further out, the Storm Prediction Center is already highlighting areas for a potential severe weather day on the day four and the day five outlook. We've got a big 15% risk here uh, for Sunday, March 30th. This is a slight risk that stretches all the way from the east part of Texas, northeastward through the Mississippi and Ohio valleys into parts of the Midwest like Indiana and Ohio, down into the Tennessee Valley and mid south and this includes places like Memphis, Nashville, and Indianapolis and uh, Columbus, Ohio. So let's take a look at the upper level pattern as we go from Friday into Saturday. You can see the trough over here digging into the central United States. This is going to allow for lift and instability to increase out in front of it and uh, that's going to set the stage for our storms. Significant moisture is going to surge out ahead of this front and it's going to be in the 60s, uh, mid 60s, some places will even approach 70s out here in this massive warm sector as we get into the heating of the day on Sunday. Combine that with significant energy. All right, we're going to have Dagon Cape values plumb over one to 2,000 joules per kilogram in some areas, and that's just fuel for thunderstorms. So put all this together and we're going to have ourselves a pretty unstable air mass and we're going to see storms forming. So all hazards are on the table Sunday. We're talking about damaging winds, we're talking about hail, and we're talking about tornadoes Sunday afternoon noon and evening as the storms develop. And guess what? It doesn't stop there. We got another daggone slight risk, a huge one from Louisiana all the way up into now southern portions of Pennsylvania and New Jersey on Monday, March 31st, as the system moves off to the east. This includes D.C., Baltimore, Philly. It includes the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, and potentially it's going to continue to impact the lower Mississippi Valley here even into the day on Monday. So again, large hail damaging winds and potential tornadoes are going to be possible on this day, but as always, you know, the East Coast, it's going to hit you guys last, right? So we're farthest out here. We don't know the details yet. Keep tuning in. We'll give you the more fine details as we uncover them. And speaking of fine details, we have them for today. We've got some severe weather that we've got to talk about today. We've already covered the uh, potential strong storms and heavy rain that's going to be happening down here in South Texas. But there's another area of interest up here in Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas. So I definitely think the storms in uh, South Texas are going to be stronger than these, but there's a decent chance chance, especially because we have some steep mid-level lapse rates or some really cool air aloft here that's going to allow for the warm air at the surface to rock it upwards. I think there's a good chance that we see some hail with these storms and maybe some pockets of damaging winds. Tornado threat's going to be really low with these storms that pop up this afternoon around 5 p.m. or so. And believe it or not, even though we're going to spend a lot of this video talking about potential severe weather and heat and stuff like that, we do have a very substantial winter threat to talk about. In fact, on the day three winter 
winter storm severity index, we've got moderate to major impacts possible in the UP of Michigan, northern Wisconsin. Even some of that's going to be spreading into the northeast as well. And this is going to be associated with this surface low that's developing between the warm and cold air over the central plains. Notice how it's going to be dropping some snow into portions of Canada. It's going to be bringing some rain into the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic regions here, and then it's going to all kind of culminate on the uh, same area and bring about some wintry weather to some of the places we just talked about. One of the most concerning things here is that we do have concern for a band of freezing rain and sleet to form just south of the heaviest snow. The Weather Prediction Center is highlighting notable probability, even up to 60 to 80 percent in some areas like the UP of Michigan for significant ice accumulations greater than a quarter inch, which could cause problems like travel problems and uh, power outages. This icing threat does extend into New England as we go into Saturday, but it also looks like it's going to be pretty impactful there in southern Ontario, especially just north and east of Toronto. Here's our official ice forecast from the uh, national blend of models, and this is actually pretty concerning because usually this is conservative with how much ice uh, we're expected to get, but all the models are, are agreeing that we could actually get close to a half inch, maybe even more, especially in the UP of Michigan. Get ready for potential power outages up there. I think this is going to be a significant storm for y'all. Now, on top of the ice, we're also going to have snow, but most of that's going to be up there in Canada. I do expect there could be a couple places, especially in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, where we could see some snow exceeding three to six inches. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And then there's another system that's coming in later that will potentially drop some uh, more significant snow in uh, South Dakota, up into Minnesota and Wisconsin once again. We'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, snow is also on the table, but this is mostly an ice problem. Now, since we've talked about the warm storms and the cold storms, let's talk about the temperature clash that's going on. First of all, look at these highs today. We've got a huge ridge uh, in the center of the country, near record temperatures there, approaching 90 degrees in some areas where we are usually 20 to 30 degrees cooler than that. Meanwhile, the northeast is still slightly below normal as we've had persistent troughing over here. But notice what happens as we go into the future. We are going to try to transport some of those really warm temperatures from today a little bit farther to the east, but it is going to be a little bit suppressed, okay? There's going to be a warm front here, and that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why we're going to have problems with uh, icing up north, but man, some really warm, nice temperatures are going to be coming to most of the east coast, and especially the southeast, as we go forward. Now, as that big severe weather system comes through, cool air is going to return to a lot of the Ohio Valley, down into the Tennessee Valley, mid-Atlantic, but then we're just going to have another ridge that comes in, and it's going to warm up again. This is spring, you know, this is what we expect this time of year, and this pattern is going to continue. Now, the overall pattern as we go, you know, farther into the future, April 3rd to 9th, is setting up to allow for warm air to sit around longer in the east. We're not going to have persistent troughing like we have. Instead, the persistent troughing is going to actually happen over here along the west coast, where we're going to be much below average and, and feeling much different over here, especially in the Pacific Northwest, and we're going to be much above average in the east. And this overall pattern does set the stage for potential strong, severe thunderstorms as we go into April. This is the wrong time of year to have cool air in the west and warm air in the east, as this is the main ingredient for large synoptic severe weather events. So obviously, I don't know how many we're going to have, or I don't know any details about them, but this is the first step towards having an active severe weather season. All right, and that's all the weather talk I have for you today. The biggest story is definitely going to be that crazy flash flooding that's happening down there in Texas. I, I wanted to spend a good amount of time talking about that, but I think tomorrow's video, we're, we're going to spend a lot more time just talking about the ice threat up north, and then of course our major severe weather outbreak that's coming. That's going to be our overall focus for the uh, foreseeable future, I believe. So if you live anywhere in the, uh, you know, the highlighted areas there for the day four or five slight risk of severe weather, make sure you're weather aware and tune back in tomorrow as we're going to have another update. Subscribe, turn notifications on, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.